Hey there, it's Dr. Justin Marcacciani, and today's video is going to be on leaky gut, malabsorption, and thyroid conditions. Again, I have an autoimmune thyroid condition, and I've been able to manage it naturally using functional medicine uh, techniques and principles. And a new study just came my way via the New England Journal of Medicine, and I'm just trying to connect it to some of this leaky gut malabsorption stuff. I want people to walk away with take-home action items and to make sense of you know what the, the research is saying. So leaky gut, really simple. This is my age old analogy that I always give here. Fingers together, right? That's your healthy tight junction, right? Inflammation in the gut, inflammation will actually weaken or, so imagine the thickness between my, my fingers is like this. And when it starts to atrophy, that's atrophic gastritis. So it starts to, to thin out and open up. And when that happens, so again, this is a cross section. So imagine your intestine and you just chopped it in half and you're looking at that chopped piece. This is a cross section here. And now I'm gonna give you a magnification right here where you have your microvilli and you have your little cilia up top and then you have the tight junctions right here kind of at the interwoven parts of the fingers where the fingers connect. So if we put our fingers together, right? That's our healthy gut lining. We open it up just a bit that's a inflamed gut lining where the tight junctions have opened up, i.e. leaky gut. Now, really important here, um, what you're gonna see is that here's our gut right here, here's the intestinal tract. When inflammation happens, we have these little pockets here open up and various food particles, right? Food particles that may be hanging out in here or we have maybe endotoxin, right? They would slip through into the bloodstream and this puts stress on our immune system. This makes our immune system fire up. And again, there's also a state of molecular mimicry where let's just talk about grains, for instance. So let's say we have gluten. Gluten is actually very similar to the thyroid tissue from a protein standpoint. So our immune system will fire off antibodies that will actually come in there and attack the thyroid tissue as well. So again, we have our microvilli here. We have our tight junctions here, and we have all of this stress from all these food particles coming into our bloodstream. Now we also have nutrition coming in here. Let's say we have vitamin C. Let's say we have magnesium. Well, these compounds actually have to slip through our microvilli to get into our body so we can be absorbed. Just because these guys are slipping through our, our gut into the bloodstream undigested doesn't necessarily mean we're gonna absorb it and utilize it. It's just creating stress. We actually have to have our nutrients come in through our microvilli to the top part called the cilia. So it's kinda of like a vacuum cleaner. So you can see here's your vacuum cleaner. It sucks up nutrients, right? Vitamin C, magnesium, iron, right? All gets sucked up. But imagine you're coming through there, right? Instead of sucking up all these healthy nutrients, let's say we get a big football. Just to stay true with the, the household analogy, that football comes in there, that's gonna clog up that vacuum cleaner. You're not gonna be able to absorb any of these nutrients. So when vitamin C comes around, boom, it's just bouncing off the football. It's not gonna be able to be absorbed. That's kind of what happens when we have inflammation in our gut. Inflammation really messes everything up. It affects the whole absorption scenario and it also affects the leaky gut. And we get more and more of these compounds here in the bloodstream stressing out the immune system. That's the key thing. Now I'm connecting it with H. pylori because this is probably one of the most common pathogens that I'm finding in my practice. Doing this for four or five years and running hundreds of these tests I found hundreds of H. pylori infections, and there's a strong correlation with autoimmune thyroid disease as well. Anyway, H. pylori, one of the common compounds or toxins of H. pylori is endotoxin. That's why you have ET right there. But one of the things we see with H. pylori is it shuts down stomach acid, and it also can help thin the lining of the gut. Not a good thing, that's atrophic gastritis. In one study, I'm gonna put in the references below the video, one study they found that patients that had atrophic gastritis or H. pylori infections, they needed more thyroid hormone, up to 20 to 30% more thyroid hormone. Okay, what does that mean? What's the takeaway? It means they needed more thyroid hormone because they weren't absorbing it. And here's the kicker. When they added in omniprazole or Prilosec or a proton pump inhibitor, because remember, when they have a thinning gut, that creates inflammation and pain. Inflammation 
Again, if it's raw, they take a proton pump inhibitor to lessen the stomach acid. And that lessens it, that also lessened the absorption. So they found that when they added Prilosec and they added thyroid hormone in an inflamed gut, the people needed even more thyroid hormone than without the Prilosec by itself. So in other words, Prilosec made the absorption problem worse. What they often found was this, Typically, we have a marker of TSH here. TSH is a thyroid brain hormone. It's the brain talking to the thyroid. So as the thyroid is lessening its output, TSH goes up, right? It's like our brain yelling to our thyroid. But one of the big things that, that they found in this study is the Prilosec increased, and as the guts were more inflamed, TSH went up even more. What does that mean? It means they're not absorbing it and the brain has to spit out more and more TSH to yell to the thyroid. It's like you got kids in the corner and you're trying to get a hold of them, get their attention and you're whispering to them and you got to increase the volume so they can hear you. And that's what's happening here. Prilosec, proton pump inhibitors with gut inflammation made the problem worse and people had to take 20 to 30% more thyroid hormone. So here's the issue. Many people that have thyroid issues have H. pylori infections. Many people that have thyroid issues also have gut issues, potentially caused by the, th by the H. pylori, and they also may have leaky gut. Actually, they definitely have leaky gut because to have a thyroid, to have an autoimmune thyroid, leaky gut and thyroid issues are almost always like this. If we see that, there's probably a malabsorption. And again, the typical treatment tends to make that problem worse. It's not getting to the underlying issue. So the big takeaway here is gut inflammation and Prilosec actually increase your need for thyroid hormone. And many people may not be aware of that. So if you're feeling like you're not quite dialing in your thyroid meds and you're having a hard time finding the right dosage and you're finding that you have other issues like leaky gut and other gut issues that aren't really getting resolved and you're just finding yourself use a whole bunch of medications to treat those symptoms, your intuition's probably right. You have to look a little bit deeper. So I hope this video kind of gives you some of the underlying mechanisms and makes sense of it all and shows you that what you're feeling isn't all just in your head, it's actually in reality. And if you want to dig a little bit deeper, feel free and click below or on the screen and find out how you can get a hold of me and how we can take the next steps uh, to move you in a positive direction. Thanks, this is Dr. J signing off.